The humanitarian Ecotech Pavilion provides a vegetarian cooking station and various games for the public. Many quiet and earthquake survivors gradually rebuild their lives with the companionships of city volunteers. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Suri Su. Thank you for joining us. For the Lunar New Year holiday break, it's a wonderful idea to pay a visit to the humanitarian Ecotech Pavilion at the Flora Expo. Inside the venue, there's a vegetarian cooking class station and the ever so popular pinball machines. At the Humanitarian Ecotech Pavilion, one can find a vegetarian cooking class station. It's one of the most popular locations. Our multi-grain instant mix is made out of 22 different ingredients. So our grain powder is very healthy and very nutritious. Just add some hot water and a couple drops of cooking oil to the multi-grain instant mix, it will easily become a healthy snack. This is one of the secrets to not needing to buy and learn New Year candies for Tzu volunteer Wang Tingyi. This is what I used in place of candies for the Lunar New Year. There are many uses for this grain powder. You can even make rice cakes with it. The most attractive game at the pavilion has got to be the eco-friendly pinball machines. Loved by both adults and kids, it's completely made out of recycled cardboard boxes and PET bottle caps. Everyone that passes by them will not hesitate to play several rounds. It's eco-friendly, it's fun, it's an interesting idea. It's making the best use of recyclable items. It's loving Mother Earth. If it can be recycled and reused, we should definitely extend its life cycle. <laughs> Environmental protection concepts are all incorporated into each of the games. It's a good way to let everybody know that loving Mother Earth is actually very simple. It's all about one, three, and five. Number five means once you have their very own bowl, chopsticks, cup, handkerchief, and eco-friendly bag. This way we can significantly reduce one-time use items. There's food, there are games, and one can learn all about environmental protection concepts. During the Lunar New Year holiday break, it's a great idea to pay a visit to the Humanitarian Ecotech Pavilion. Teachers and students from the social education class at the Tsuji Kuala Lumpur and Selengo chapter have painted the surrounding walls of the Panda Inda Dai kindergarten. Let's check out the amazing transformation. One person holds a cell phone while another person draws a sketch. After that, we will paint the areas. Twelve teachers and students from the Tsuji social education class have come to the Panda Inda Dai kindergarten to paint their surrounding walls. There are also many teachers and designers who are working closely with us behind the scenes. Therefore, we are able to express our great love through the wall paintings. On the wall paintings, we design loving hearts. In addition, there are small trees representing the kindergartners who are like saplings that will grow into larger trees. The children will be really happy. In the past, there were nothing on the walls, but now there are many loving hearts and tree leaves painted on it. With the creativity and hard work of the volunteers, the kindergarten walls look both beautiful and full of humanistic culture, adding vitality to the school. In Hualien, a 104-year-old senior volunteer Wang Chenzhi passed away. He was the first certified male Tsuji commissioner. In addition, he traveled around Taiwan on foot to help the people in need. This devoted volunteer served wholeheartedly until his last breath. A senior member of the Dharma family, Wang Chenzhi, passed away peacefully on the first day of the Lunar New Year. He has always been a dedicated volunteer in Yuli, where he was known as the guardian of the mountains. After hearing the news, Dharma masters from the Jinsa abode made a trip to the hospital to send their blessings to him, hoping that Mr. Wang will come back soon in the next lifetime to be a living bodhisattva again. As one of the Tsuji members, our goal is not to stay in the pure land. Instead, it's our ultimate motivation to come back to the world where sentient beings reside. It's our purpose to help those who are still suffering. So with your compassionate heart, vow to come back to keep on helping, okay? Our dear Bodhisattva, our dear guardian of the mountains, we will be waiting for your return. 
The two essential items Mr. Wang always had on his person were a briefcase and an umbrella. Although he can't drive a car or ride a motorcycle, he still travels all around Taiwan on foot. He recruited many donating members and visiting people suffering from illnesses. Dharma Master Zheng Yan wanted to especially share this devoted disciple's story with everyone. Yeah,我们都可学习,那这样才能了,这话脉相传啊。while walking on the Cixi path, Mr. Wang had dedicated himself unconditionally toward others. He lived a meaningful life as a volunteer and made full use of his potentials. His purity and compassion is something that we all need to learn from. Cixi volunteer Tan Xiuren in Taipei's Wenshan district was an entrepreneur who owned a glove and face mask company. Since she was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2013, she became a full-time volunteer. 從小就是做什麼事情都會看日子,然後就覺得什麼事情都要去看日子,什麼事情都要去挑時間。該來的時候總是要去面對。I used to be superstitious, especially when it comes to business. I saw many fortune tellers before starting my business. Afterward, I checked the calendar for an auspicious time to do everything. She was focusing on her business, so she has to consider many things. It's natural for her to consider feng shui when making decisions. Since I joined Cixi, I've kept a positive mind and strong faith, so gradually I became less superstitious. The first time I went to chant for people who passed away, I felt scared to see the deceased body in front of me. However, after a few times, I felt fine. Now whenever I pass by a funeral, I will say a Buddhist chant for them. Once when I was going to Hualien to volunteer, I found that my right arm can't move. The doctor told me I had stage 4 breast cancer. He was surprised by how calm I was upon hearing the news. I told him that thanks to Cixi, I've prepared myself to face any challenges that may come my way. She was very brave as a cancer patient. She has made her decision to be strong and accepted it. When the doctor told her that she needed to begin chemotherapy, she cut her hair right away. Her personality has always been brave and strong, but with her belief in Cixi, she has become much stronger. I felt different as a hospital volunteer after I became ill. Doctors and nurses sometimes ask me to talk to some patients because it's easier for them to accept the truth after talking to me. After the bone marrow and stem cell match successfully, we will find a donor and a receiver to save a life. I've had serious illness too, so I understand how much suffering a family has to bear if a family member got sick. The Buddhist teachings did not teach us to worship the Buddha because the Buddha will never just sit there and wait for you to pray to him. The Buddha is busy helping those in need, and that's the spirit we must learn. It has been six years since she was diagnosed with terminal breast cancer. Tan has switched her energy from her business to Cixi missions, and she hopes she can have more time. Doing Cixi was the best time of her life, and she wished the time could last longer. Cixi volunteers in Liaoning, China, continue to help families who have lost their children or even their spouses. The volunteers encourage them to walk out from their grievances. 
Under the freezing temperature, city volunteers are preparing for a distribution. Since they will hand out goods to nearly 200 households, this is a major challenge to the volunteers in Benxi because there are only 30 of them. The 10 sisters shoulder the jobs of general services, checking items in the list and distributions. Many elderly volunteers don't know about computer and are afraid of losing relief goods, so me and my sister take over their work. By doing so, now we can truly understand the meaning of taking our responsibility can make us grow. When she was young, she never listened to me, but now she listens to me when we do Ziji work. After we joined Ziji, we have consensus. Before that, we would end up fighting because we had argument. In this family, the mother, who has hearing and speaking impairments, lies on the bed without energy. Her son's passing had made her cry so hard that she had become blind. Her husband has been taking medications for years. This house is in need of positive energy. Volunteers also bring relief goods to this nursing home. Zhuang Changhai appears very lonely after his wife and child passed away. Your wife is not by your side anymore, so you don't have any responsibility. Then you can come out with us to do Ziji work. I will take you wherever I go. Let's make a deal, okay? Let's make a deal. <laughs> Changing mindset can also help a person change his life too. If these people can join Ziji, they won't be lonely anymore because they are supported by a big family. Even though it's been a year since the massive Hualien earthquake struck last year, city volunteers have not stopped accompanying the affected residents. Let's check out two heartwarming stories of how two families have walked out of the shadows. When there are so many negative circumstances all coming at you at once, you will feel that life isn't really worth living for. In the dark night of February 6, in an instant, many people's lives were shaken to the core. I was in a very negative state of mind. I was even thinking about just taking the kids and ending everything. In the first instance, Suji volunteers mobilized and set up four different service stations, three makeshift shelter centers and one late night food station, hoping to comfort the affected residents and bring some warmth and light amidst the darkness. Arriving at the volunteer's home is like returning to her own home. At the time of the earthquake, Du Peiying lived near the Zhonghua Elementary School. The massive earthquake terrified the mother-daughter duo, so they somehow made their way to the Zhonghua Elementary School Service Center. That was where they met Ziji volunteer Liao Yici. I went up to comfort her, and she just held on to me, sobbing. She said that we were more caring than family. Every time when I visited, the little girl never smiled, so I thought that I would introduce them to my own daughter. When Du Peiying and Liao Yici's daughter met for the very first time, there was an instant connection. Not to mention, both of their children were close in age, so there were even more topics to talk about. It's like I've known her all my life. Maybe this is what faith is all about. It definitely brought us together. It was really surreal, because once we met, we couldn't stop talking to one another. We don't talk about what's happened in the past, the sad parts. We don't talk about that. We talk about what's happening now in the present. Zhang Yingjie also taught her how to run an online business, helping her maintain a stable income. It's been a year of family-like companionship, helping Du Peiying gradually rediscover her confidence in life. <laughs> Another family-like interaction is between Ziji volunteer Liu Liqing and affected resident Peng Baoyun. Just nearly escaping the pile of debris, in retrospect, it's a moment filled with immense fear. During the most difficult time, the volunteers gave her the shoulder that she needed to lean on. 
It's happened. You were briefly facing up to life's challenges. Just like Dhamma Master Zheng Yan had said, you must have great compassion and make grand vows. When you have a goal, that's how you can walk a better path in life. The volunteers were mobilized to help clean up the debris in the aftermath of the earthquake. The family is solely supported by the husband's income. With four children, they moved a total of three times before successfully renting an older house that could be temporarily settled into. If we kept on sleeping in the makeshift shelter centers, we would lose the feeling of what a home feels like. It makes me really sad inside because we do have a home, but we can't go back to it anymore. All I can do is crying silently to myself. The volunteers also brought over a second-hand refrigerator, a gas stove, and other everyday household items. Therefore, Peng Baoyun is now able to use these appliances and items to prepare meals for her family. The family's life is slowly returning back on track, gradually recovering from the traumatic ordeal. I stayed with her to find out what the problems were and then find the solution to her problems. There needed to be a lot of patience, also needed to be a good listener. That's when they will finally open up to you. No matter how low of a point she was in her life before, a year has already passed with the continuous accompaniment of the volunteers. Now Du Peiying has returned back to the workforce, working as a housekeeper for various Airbnbs. After their constant companionship, I'm no longer stuck in the darkness. I can see a bright light guiding me out. It's thanks to them that I'm able to walk out of despair. When one falls, Tsuji volunteers will always be there to pick them right back up again. They will give them the courage to face life's many challenges, helping the affected residents walk out of the shadows one firm step at a time. Today we'll take a look at reservoirs in Hong Kong. Hong Kong faced the worst drought in 50 years in 2018, straining the use of water in Hong Kong. As early as the 1860s, Hong Kong began to build a reservoir, and a total of 18 reservoirs have been built. Here's more. Hong Kong is a modern international city, and Victoria Harbor is like a bright pearl. High-rise buildings are everywhere, and the population density ranks high in the world. Under pressure from the large population and development, are there enough reservoirs to manage water resources? Hong Kong's 1,100 square kilometers of land has 7.4 million people. Only about one-fourth of the land can be used as urban area. 75 percent is mountainous, so there's no way to collect water. There are many mountains and little land, as well as no major river. In order to retain water, in 1860, the Hong Kong government turned a valley into the Pak Fu Lam Reservoir. This reservoir in Hong Kong, also called Embankment Pond, the size of the reservoir is not large as the main function is to collect rainwater. But Hong Kong is hot and rainless this year, and compared to the same period last year, the water storage capacity is obviously reduced by 10 percent. In May and June of 2018, Hong Kong experienced the most severe drought since 1963. The rainfall in the three months was only 457.3 millimeters. This caused the reservoir shortage in the whole port to be only 390 million cubic meters, the lowest in the past five years. The main rainfall in Hong Kong is concentrated in the summer and autumn, and the area alternates between drought and flood every year. Winter is the dry season, so water in this reservoir suddenly drops down. There's a major lack of water. There are several main reasons. The first is the climate, and then this type of land is just high mountains and water. Drainage is very quick and there is no place to collect it. The third is the geological condition, where mainly granite, which is hard to infiltrate, so groundwater is not developed. Therefore, the construction of ponds early by the Hong Kong government was used as a buffer to regulate the uneven distribution of water resources between droughts and floods. Currently, has 17 reservoirs in Hong Kong with a total water storage capacity of 586 million cubic meters, based on Hong Kong's daily average fresh water consumption of 2.72 million cubic meters, it can maintain about seven months of water supply.
。在香港。呃，历史当中，我们最主要的一个呃水资源的。In the history of Hong Kong, one of the most important sources of water supply is local water collection, including collecting rainwater in reservoirs and then supplying water for local use. In the late 1970s, local supply still accounted for the vast majority of water. 然后，本地的呃这个供应还是占了绝大部分。Here is the Upper Tai Tam Reservoir in Hong Kong, which is one of the most important reservoirs in the area. The dam in front of the reporter is the Tai Tam Reservoir Dam. This year is the 100th anniversary of dam construction. It can be said that it was the first in Asia. At that time, in order to build this dam, 15 families and their ancestors were relocated as the Tai Tam village was submerged underwater. The reason for the construction of the dam is to provide a large area for water collection, which was once an important source of water supply for Hong Kong. A large number of historic buildings around the pond were listed as culturally important in 2009. Hong Kong's Jaffe Road is 1,660 meters in length. It was named such to commemorate the chief engineer of the Tai Tam Dam, who died at the age of 46, two years after the dam was completed from leukemia. The old age of water conservancy projects, as well as demand and extreme weather, led Hong Kong to carry out an assessment in the 1960s, finding water consumption is still 200 million cubic meters short of supply. As a cosmopolitan city, there was a need for a stable source of water, instead of constantly waiting for God to provide rain. At the moment, water is flowing down these stairs on this water diversion channel near the Hong Kong Reservoir. It seems that the water volume is very abundant, but this scene is not so common in Hong Kong, especially in 1963. Hong Kong was experiencing very serious water problems. When the water in the reservoir went dry and the groundwater was not enough, the Hong Kong government bought water from China two years later. Since then, many ponds and reservoirs in Hong Kong have been used to store water from Dongjiang. Despite the new water source, Hong Kong at that time was still a British colony. Because of political considerations, the government did not want to rely entirely on Dongjiang water, so they had to find new waterways and create a safe source of water. In 1965, the water from Dongjiang was coming to Hong Kong. Hong Kong lacks flat land, so they made this offshore reservoir. This is the 50-year history of the Hong Kong water supply. From the reservoir, Plover Cove and High Island, we now have two reservoirs with dams which block the seawater, which had to be pumped. This has combined water storage of about 500 million cubic meters. Plover Cove and High Island Reservoir are the earliest large-scale freshwater coastal reservoirs in the world. The advanced water conservancy facilities are considered the pride of Hong Kong. However, there are no plans to build new reservoirs at the moment, and the reservoir's water source is completely different. At present, in Hong Kong, 20% of rainwater is stored, and 80% of the Dongjiang water is stored, which has to be purchased with foreign currency. On the third day of the Lunar New Year, Indonesian President Joko Widodo has attended a New Year gathering of the Chinese communities. The President has delivered his New Year wishes for the attendees in Chinese. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.